welcome to Northern Farms. Today, we need to collect up all the straw on field eight before finding a way to feed the chickens. Can we get all this done? Let's get farming. So it's our second month on the farm and it's going to be a pretty busy day here. Uh, as I said in the introduction, we need to find some way to feed the chickens and I think a new piece of equipment is going to be very important in getting that done. And uh, first, we're going to have to deal with the straw. So we're heading down to the shop to get a baler, I think is going to be our best bet for doing that. And we got several options as far as that goes. And looking at the various options we've got for balers, I've been very tempted to go for the Massey Ferguson the Fent here, uh, where we've got a built-in wrapper on them, and they'd be pretty good. But I kind of want to buy that kind of thing outright. Uh, I want to be able to adjust the foil and things like that. So instead, I think we're going to go for something a bit simpler to start with. And yeah, I've not really used stuff from the Gawiel pack so far. So let's put some BKT tires on here. Uh, we'll put the wide tires on it. We're going to leave the Fisher J number plate on because uh, this is going to be pulled by our tractor. And let's buy. Oh, no, we're going to lease this. Uh, it's 59,000. We have nowhere near enough money, uh, but very few options on it. So, yes. 3054 for the lease cost on that. Um, and that's the thing. I think at this stage, with this start from scratch, uh, we are very much going to be leasing a lot of stuff. I want to keep the actual cost of our loan down and, uh, and give us the leeway that if we need to borrow the money, we can. So uh, we should be fairly good with that. We also will get a bale wrapper for when we start doing silage a little later. But initially, we can get away with doing hay for both the cows and the sheep. So uh, that will be a good start. Now, of course, uh, this baler will not allow us to turn any hay we make into pellets initially. But I think that's probably going to be a second year thing. It is ultimately what I would like to do on here. Uh, at the moment, though, we just do not have the money to invest in uh, machinery that expensive. Now, this baler, this only does the small 25, uh, 125 centimeter bales. So it's going to be uh, quite a few bales that it produces from on here. We are going to have to extend this farm at some point. And I think that means we're going to have to knock some fences down. Uh, I think that's going to be a, a sensible thing for us maneuvering wise anyway. Let's turn on the baler and put it down. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so this should allow us to clear these up fairly quickly. We'll be able to stack them at the side of the field and uh, and go from there. Uh, but these 125 centimeter bales, as I said, will produce quite a few so uh, we'll have to find a way of getting them off here at, so that we can work this field pretty quickly because that is going to be the thing. We do need to get this field turned around uh, because we, we want to get next year's crop in and things like uh, canola need to go in now. So uh, I think we're probably going to end up with a spring crop in here. Uh, same goes for the carrot field over there. One of the beauties of having this tractor on our farm as our main work tractor is that there's very little, especially at this stage, uh, that we can throw at it that it won't be able to handle. Uh, most of the balers that we can throw at it will be fine with. Any uh, six meter piece of kit should be fine as well. Uh, just pretty much everything that we uh, that we have uh this will be a great all-round tractor for uh, which makes me very very happy uh the fact that it's only got 10 hours on it uh, and it's second hand was just a massive boon getting this for for what, 40 50 percent off uh was the perfect setup for us on here so uh, i don't think there'll be a need for a new tractor for a while what I would like to get on here is to uh, to get a telehandler. 
and that is going to be our next purchase i was kind of hoping that one might turn up in the sales overnight but uh, unfortunately nothing turned up in the sales so we'll see how things progress during the day and one of the advantages of doing this job now is that it will give the shop a chance to refresh and we'll be able to see if anything actually turns up that might be useful uh, later in the day we're coming up to our 12th bale now we are gonna be probably about 20 bales of this field in total which is really quite good uh, that should keep us going fair while with our cows so just bring that up to 100 percent open that up and yeah I, I think there's there's a possibility that we might get up to 20 bales off here uh the following rows well look judging by that uh we're getting about a bale a row uh we've got four more rows to go three more full rows to go maybe so uh maybe it's going to be as low as 15 uh, but that's absolutely fine 15 bales is a good number for us to get some manure running with the cows or possibly just to uh do a little bit of extra padding in our feed for them as well we're actually going to be closer to 20 bales than i thought this is bale number 18 uh, absolutely fantastic uh, so is there one more bale in the leftover straw on this field there's actually a decent amount in that last little row there uh, this row here, though, is a lot thinner on the ground. Uh, I don't know if there is uh, a full 65%, although it's going up at a, a, a fairly decent rate. This does get thicker towards the end of the field. So uh, us being about halfway through the row and getting uh, near on 50% is really good. There are a few patches around the field. You can see one over there to the left as well uh can we get a 19th bale off here uh, that would be really good to manage to squeeze that much out but we're at 74 percent so we're nowhere near that full bale so having run all over the field the most i can get it up to is 85 percent so we'll have to leave that there uh, we'll go and try and find somewhere to park this. I don't know about the width on this. Our wide tyres actually might be the undoing of it. Will it slot in there? Oh, it might actually slot in this barn here. Uh, and this is the problem I'm finding at the moment. It's this yard is very tight for our equipment that we've got on here. Uh, we able to slot bits and pieces surprisingly in places I wasn't expecting to so there is that on the plus side um, but uh, yeah the combines having to sit in the the silage uh, or the the, uh, the silage clamp uh, the header trailer is way too big for round here and our tractor does fit in here uh, and uh, yeah, I think this might work for a tractor and uh, a telehandler maybe. But I think as our farm expands, we are going to need to find somewhere to expand our farm to. So I've headed back down to the shop. We're going to go and see now if we can do something about getting a telehandler. What have we got in the shop here? We've got an oxbow. We've got the oxbow rower, which I would, under normal circumstances, be very happy to see this piece of equipment. Uh, this is a fantastic piece of equipment, but uh, unfortunately, it's 55000 and we are not ready to buy something like this. So I need to go shopping for some telehandlers, and I would love to get uh, either JCB Agrilodal, which is 108000 or the Merlot Turbo Farmer, and I haven't had a Merlot on a series in a while. So let's price this thing up and just see how much money we're going to uh well no we'll we'll start off leasing this so uh let's see how much uh it's going to cost us to lease it uh we can add a trailer hitch which i think will be very useful 
Uh, we can also put Michelin tires on it. Uh, I could go for the standard or the wide tires. The wide tires. But what we're doing is probably the better way to go. Clean windows. We're going to add the safety frame. And then uh, the rest of it is good. Uh, let's find somebody to go on the number plate. And congratulations go to Taz Oslo. You've been selected at random from the producer level patrons. Uh, so, yeah, we go with TA20SLO on there. And OK that. Uh, we will then lease the Merlot uh, for 4630 It's going to cost us nearly £1,000 a day to have this. Uh, but for now, I don't want to spend the extra cash. So, yes. Perfect. And then to go with that, we are going to need a bale fork, and I will buy that outright for 900. And I want a Bressel and Laid high tip bucket, which unfortunately is 8,250 in the configuration we want. So that will have to be leased for £82 a day. Right, so let's go check out our new piece of equipment. We have uh, the bale spike there, we've got the bucket there. And then we got the Merlot itself. Let's jump in this. Uh, now, I haven't got the three-point linkage on the back of this. And I think eventually, if we bought this, I would absolutely be looking to get that. Uh, I think we're going to have to take a couple of trips back and forth to get this uh, back and forth. Um, unless I can find a way to get the three-point in the bucket... I will have a quick go at this because this might be humorous uh, if it fails. So, coming close. Yeah, if I could lift it up. Yeah. Uh, let's see if I can uh, find a way to get this in here and get this back all at once. So, with a little bit of help from the guys in the shop, we've managed to actually haul this into the bucket. So, uh, let's get this up and uh, turn on our beacon. There we go, and uh, away we go, back up to the farm, uh, and deal with uh, the other two jobs that we have to do today. Getting these spikes out of this bucket should be a lot easier than it was getting them in, uh, and we will just uh, tip them off onto the side of the field here, where we can come and pick them up. Oh. Get them out yeah there we go those are out and uh, now i'm gonna go and try and feed my chickens so this is the reason why i got got the bucket we have stuff all over this farm that we are going to need to to scoop up and uh, and do with this bucket and in fact uh when we come to sell this uh come to sell this wheat we're going to to need to get it up in the bucket anyway so fill the bucket up and let's see if we can actually feed our chickens with it now there's a gateway that i might be able to come in from uh, at the moment it's clear because we don't have any eggs and because our chickens have yet to be fed uh, we are able to go through that gateway towards their feeding trough um, but I think we might have to come from the roadway in future to feed our chickens. So let's get this in here. And yeah. So here normally is where the eggs would be. I'm just going to take this forwards. Like so. And we'll try carefully tipping. If any of this goes on the ground then we're going to have a problem. But that does seem to be feeding the chickens. Yep, yeah, that's all going in. And wow, that has only fed them a really small amount. So I don't think any of our wheat is going to go for sale this year. I think we're going to end up feeding all of it to the chickens. The chickens have taken a really big chunk of our uh wheat uh we've ended up with probably about half of all of the wheat we've harvested uh going to the chickens uh which surprises me a bit 
Uh, hopefully that will keep them going for a very long time. Uh, but right now, they are, uh, they, they've eaten, well, they've got about 8,000 liters. Uh, I think it's going to be by the end of this. Uh, let's uh, get this into here as well. Yep, yeah, there we go. That is full. So how much is that? In total, our chickens have got 9,000 liters. Uh, so, yeah, that is basically a uh, full trailer. Uh, over a full trailer. Uh, we could put 8,000 liters in our trailer. So, just over a full trailer has gone to the chickens. And uh, I think we only got just over... Well, yeah, we, we got about... Uh, I think it was about 12,000, 13,000 liters out of the uh out of the field anyway so um yeah looking uh looking quite a bit uh down on the amount we've got in fact no i think we've got more than that because our trailer holds more than 10 tons our red rock trailer holds uh 27 000 liters uh but uh we had a lot less than that so yeah okay so we've not put that much in we maybe put a third of our wheat in uh, still a sizable amount, though, to keep those chickens fed. And, uh, of course, they will probably need some more later in the year as well. I don't know how long that will keep them fed for. So uh, chickens are going to be something that need a lot of feeding on here. Now, will this fit within here? Oh, that is, yeah, that is too tight. Uh, I saw that clipping the edge. So uh, we need to find somewhere else to put this. In fact, I've been wondering what we can put in these sheds here. And this end shed is very accessible to my telehandler. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's put our uh, telehandler parts or our bits like the bucket in here. And I think, actually, it didn't connect up these. Now, can I connect these up? Yeah. So, I wasn't using the overloading function or the, uh, the top uh function on my bucket then because i needed to connect the valves up and i didn't do it so uh that's why that wasn't working now we just need somewhere to place and stack all of these bales uh, i think we're gonna have to find somewhere off to the side a little bit and see how many of these we can get off a field at the same time so with 18 bales on the field, ideally I want to try and get off here in as few trips as possible. So what I'm going to do is try and create triple stacks like this. Our telehandler should be more than capable of lifting this. And then we'll get them off the field this way. I just don't know where we're going to put them. Best place I think to put them is in here. These are really too narrow to put anything else and the bales just about fit nicely between the uh the two support struts so uh six rows of bales should also fit in there quite nicely so uh, that might actually turn out to be pretty perfect this is my third lot and i'm getting better at getting these uh initial stacks going quite nicely we want to go forwards, please. Yeah. And then in. And uh, yeah, the, this field should be cleared fairly well. Uh, we're going to have to scan it. I mean, that is a big thing that we need to do going forwards. We need to get all of our fields scanned uh, to get the most out of everything around here. Uh, we're going to have to mulch it. Uh, we're probably going to have to put some lime on it this year as well. And, uh, yeah, so lots that needs doing. Let's get this in here. And, of course, the other big expense we're going to have over the next couple of months is we've got to get a carrot harvester of some description uh, in order to get all of those carrots lifted. I am really intrigued to how uh, we're going to do that. I've got to do it in a way that we can get it up in a day. Um, but uh, at the same time, that big carrot harvester is so expensive 
I don't know if spending 20 odd grand to do it is really a wise choice. I'm really pleased I got the wide tires on this. Uh, it has been absolutely perfect for this field. Uh, we are going to be very much using this as a, a, a piece of equipment all around the place. As I said, I'm slightly disappointed that I forgot to get the three point, but you live and learn. And uh, eventually, maybe when we can afford to buy this, uh, we might be able to do that and uh, and add the three point on. For now, though, uh, it'll, it'll do the job fine. We can use it. We got the tow hitch on. So if we need to go and get anything with it, if we need to put a trailer on or uh, going and picking things up for the shop and things like that, we'll be able to do that. So that'd be good. We are going to have to go and buy a set of forks soon. So at that, uh, at that point, we'll probably buy a flatbed of some description to put on the back of here so that we can take eggs to market and, uh, and do other bits and pieces like that. Um, because we're going to need to make money from the eggs now that we've put most of our wheat into there uh, and in fact our wheat is is probably gonna be all reserved for the uh, chickens at the moment i'm very pleased with this though we have got all of this straw off the field uh we've got a nice bit of shelter for it and it's gonna fit in here really really well look at that looking at the map I'm fairly sure, yeah, our uh, carrots are ready to harvest. So we're, we want to go and grab a carrot harvester and get in there next time. Uh, but we've got these two fields to cut. So both, uh, let's have a look here. Both five and six are ready to cut as well. Six, of course, is our sheep pen. Uh, five, though, is a separate field. We also need to deal with the horses, but we'll deal with the horse paddock probably over the winter i think uh yeah so we can remove the horse field items and we'll be able to move remove the horse barn and we may even start building a uh, a more machinery focused yard the other side of the house there um but for now i think that's really good we've got a lot of work done here today and our brand new turbo farmer our merlo turbo farmer is doing a fantastic job so i'm gonna leave this here all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, drop us a comment, and give it a share. Special thanks to all my patrons and channel members. Your support is invaluable in making these videos and helping the channel to grow. For more from Virtual Farmer, check out the links below, follow on Twitch to watch live, and for more videos, subscribe and ring that bell. I will see you next time. Goodbye.